I'm working on uh, maintaining the Sony TCWR465 uh, dual uh, cassette deck. I took out the mechanism according to the service manual, which can be downloaded from the Hi-Fi uh, video uh, website. Anyway, you can find it if you search. It really isn't available at 465, but uh, in the page for 465 from Sony, it says the mechanism, whatever maintenance is identical with a 445 and the 445 service manual with all the disassembly is available. So I took the front out and then out of the front, the mechanism and these are the screws for various undoings. One, two, three, four to take this out. You pull it out. You pull this out from here you know, this wires. So I got to the internal mechanism and now I'm pulling out this. Uh, this is called the trigger, is the main motor that flips between left and right and also is engaged in moving these flippers for uh, this individual gears um, that are responsible for the forwards reverse both for play and for uh, forwards and rewind. Uh, lots of belts, one, two, three, four belts. I don't know if there's any behind this. So there are four belts. The mechanism itself seems very similarly winded is just that this outside belt that goes between the capstan, it, this is a dual capstan each side. So this capstan pinch roller type of uh, connection for the, so this is the B, the two deck is on the outside of the wheel. And this one is on the inside of the wheel. It, it, inside of this wheel, I mean. And therefore, the outside goes to this one for forwards and reverse. And this one is the inside groove of this wheel going to the... Uh, this one has three layers. So the inside of this and this one goes to the middle. And the outside is just a slip, uh, you know when it gets to the end of the tape, that third one slips. Otherwise, that's the one that uh, moves the movement to the internal gears themselves. So anyway, after you take out the this motor, that's a capstan motor, inside, take them through the front so you have to flip the eject, there are these two screws that allow you to take the trigger mechanisms out. These two motors, the capstan motor and the trigger motor, are connected on the same circuit. So once you take those two screws out, it's all out. So the trigger just moves this mechanism through this tiny wheel, rotating this big wheel that engages, I guess, with a flipping here to the right uh, cassette deck and here, I guess, to the left cassette deck or, sorry, it's, it's this gear. So this, this little gear moves this green piece and this one has a corresponding thing in the back. <coughs> now, looking at this trigger mechanism, I guess this tiny wheel probably is always the problem because it's under a lot of force to move this big wheel that moves that mechanism that engages the 
you know, the belts, the gears and so on. So I'll pull it out and inspect it to see if there's any crack in it or anything. rotation of this little wheel is quite quite easy so no problem there I'm looking at this wheel though I see a sign here if you see I'm not sure I don't want to extend it too much to crack it completely but anyway, I have to count how many teeth because this wheels get sold by teeth. So I'll get back. Yeah, I counted then this gear has 17 teeth and right where you see at the top, there's a crack. Meaning this wheel will not sit tight on the shaft. Therefore, when you want it to rotate because of this motor, it will not it will not rotate, it will just slip. Uh, I'm gonna have to look to see if there is any available to purchase. Yeah, this gear is available from AliExpress if you have the courage to buy from that location for uh, 350 or something like that, very cheap. 17 teeth for Sony and on ebay for 26 dollars a piece i don't know if they are original this is pvc uh, polyvinyl blah 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 so if you don't get one that's original and you get one that was 3d printed it's a problem it will not last very long and so on so what i did because i know where the the problem is the crack I made a metal ring and I put it such that uh, where the metal crack where the crack is the metal is continuous I made it out of a paper clip is not very strong but uh, hopefully you know for the meantime it's gonna last gonna put it back together and see if this tightened it enough so that it stays in place because the problem is because it was cracked, it was coming off. And when it's coming off, the teeth of the 17 wheel, a pin wheel does not engage with this. And then the secondary ring uh, doesn't engage with the next gear and uh, nothing moves, basically. It remains in whatever state it's in because it's disengaged, it's probably forwards and reverse. Timestamp May 1st, 1996. So, uh, what's that? 30 years. We're in 2025. So, what's written on this? Yep, 1701, 1996. So, this was manufactured with parts from January 1996. Could be just in time. Uh, 1996. Ah, cool. So, I'll put it back together and see what happens. It's put back together, three screws to put this um, trigger motor together, uh, back in place, and four screws, one, two, three, four, to put the back with the electronics. By the way, um, changing the gears is not complicated, and they are available, $30, something like that four gear uh, sorry four belts uh, i checked them though they are tight and you know i don't think i need to change them right away but if i do they are available so anyway i want to mention that with the gears the most complicated thing is to put the two longer 
uh, belts around the motor for the capstan, which is uh, this one here. And, uh, you know, you can, can put them very easily, but, uh, you know, it's something you need to be careful with. And then you plug in the cable for the two motors and you're done. So now I'll put this back into the chassis. I said put them back into the chassis, but actually you first mount them in the front of the cassette deck with this one, two, three screws. And then this whole front is mounted. One screw in the leg, one screw in the leg, one screw in the middle for the, um, for the front. And uh, there are three more screws that uh, secure one, two, three, that's it. One, two, three, that secure the mechanism into the, into the box itself. So with a bit of finessing, I was able to put the front in the chassis and I screwed up this one screw so that it stays in place. There's one screw, two, three, clearly marked for, uh, the screws for the cassette deck and I'm only going to put those ones. I'm not going to put the ones for the legs which go here and here just yet. Now to connect these things, uh, okay, there's this one that goes in here. want to be certain that that's the direction it goes in. This one here, make sure it's in. It's nice that the orientation is very clear. You can't put them in any other way because they're short. So they won't read in any other place. So it was done for fast manufacturing in Japan and this one here and it's all connected and obviously it has some type of holding things in place but pretty much is all in so I'm gonna plug it in and do a test so I loaded some tapes Yep, let's see if I do the reverse. Did it turn? Yep. Fast forwards. Yep. Reverse. Yep. So this tape one works completely. Let's see tape two. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. So everything works. So in conclusion, this was the problem with this unit. You press play, it works. And then when you press stop, it rewinds for like 30 seconds or goes fast forward, one of the two directions, and then it stops. Then if you try to press play again, it won't play because that uh, trigger gear remains somewhere in the middle. It doesn't engage properly because that tiny, tiny wheel uh, gear, um, it just, you know, moves out of place and it doesn't engage properly. Uh, I figured this out by uh, looking at the gear from the outside, seeing how it moves out of place and pushing it back in place with something non-electric, you know, the a piece of wood pushing it. It's, it's right here. Let's see if I can put some light. Yeah. 
you see that tiny w gear with a metal ring around it? That's the ring I fashioned to, to squeeze it a little bit. The crack was tiny, but nevertheless is enough to make that gear not stay in its place. So anyway, everything else is secondary. If this ever slips when fast forward, rewind and so on, I can change the belts. It's no big deal. And now I have to find a source for the 17 teeth tiny gear and figure out if it's 3D printed or if it's, uh, you know, uh, original, which is very hard to figure out because they can use a material that is as white as this. But anyway, now it fully works. So I'm going to put some tapes and play some stuff.